Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So today we are going to be working on another sketchbook doodle spread, I guess. I haven't called it that in such a long time. Um, but yeah, we haven't technically really broken into this particular sketchbook quite yet. I know you guys have seen the first page, but I kind of want to continue that painting energy into today's session. So I wanted to fill up a spread with just some gouache painting and I'm treating it very similarly to how I do my digital kind of like doodle dumps or sketch pages where I kind of do a compilation of a bunch of doodles together and I kind of render them uh, up to a certain point that I think that is kind of like appropriate for each one and they're kind of just scattered and worked on as kind of like little mini separate pieces but they're all laid out on one single spread or canvas. So I didn't really do too much for the sketching. So I did sketch with the Pilot Color Eno first, and then I switched to the Prismacolor Colorase pencils. So this one is in Carmine Red, and I am finding my uh, pencil extender because I realized that this pencil was getting a little bit too short for me to comfortably hold. And I'm using the Colorase to help um basically make the like the lines appear a little bit more strongly compared to my pilot color eno as well as it won't dissolve when i start to paint so i only decided to film a little portion of that because i kind of forgot and i wasn't planning on doing this session as a uh video but i thought it maybe would be fun to kind of do a traditional version of one of my sketch pages or like that's how i like to call these compilations so that is what we are going to do i'm drawing my oc masaki today because it's been really cold lately and i've been feeling a little bit um just chilly i don't know if i'm sick or not but um i'm always like usually bundled up i'm usually wearing my 17 hoodie or my red blanket like whenever i walk around the house or i'm sitting at my desk i'm showing you guys a up close version of the two different parts of the sketch so the lighter pink area on the face is usually the pilot color eno and then the rest of the more prominent lines are done with the color race i'm taking a kneaded eraser and kind of picking up the kind of like excess lines made from the pilot color eno so that we don't have too much uh, disrupting the face but after that i am going to prepare the spread for painting so i'm just going to be using my watercolor palette which looks kind of gross right now and just kind of lay down some areas of color so i am aware of what i want certain areas to look like i didn't spend too much time actually painting with the watercolor so i didn't really put down too much of the shadows or lighting or just like generic values i kind of just placed down generic colors that i would like for each of the outfits so i was browsing a bit on pinterest and i was kind of looking up like more chunky sweaters kind of baggier clothes because i feel like masaki likes to bundle up a little bit more i think i project a lot of my own choices onto masaki specifically just because like i usually like wearing more um bigger clothing or chunkier clothing especially in the winter i just find it a little bit more cozy i love like bat winged uh sweaters or any kind of like just chunky sweaters and stuff like that like cable knit um any longer cardigans anything like that is pretty much what i wear in the winter for the most part hoodies as well um and i like layering jackets up if i can if not i'll just wear my giant puffer but um, I thought it'd be fun to draw Masaki in a few different outfits that is not the default that I usually make him wear. Because I think you guys are most familiar with him wearing the kind of like turquoise teal sweater along with the brown apron that kind of matches his hair color. And I think the other one is kind of either, I think it's like dark green turtleneck and a beige sweater, kind of like that color. Or it's kind of a beige sweater on the inside and a dark green coat on the outside so it's kind of like flipped the, um, the two different colors for his winter outfits but when i was browsing on pinterest trying to generate some ideas i found some cute ones that had more of like um either big scarves covering like half the face um we also have kind of like a nice mustardy hoodie with a giant green puffer i believe the other puffer was like a different color but i changed it to green because i associate that color with Masaki a little bit more. The one that I'm working on, I'm going to be working, by the way, from right to left this time instead of left to right. I don't know why I chose to do this, but 
yeah, I decided to start off with this little one first and I think it's mostly because I was excited to do the sweater. So I have him wearing a kind of thinner white turtleneck underneath and then he has a... I don't know what's the style of clothing this is called. It's like a, a pullover... Is it just a pullover? I'm not too sure. But basically, if you zip up the little part near his clavicle up to his chin, it'll kind of create like a turtleneck effect. But if you have it unzipped, it kind of creates like a little cute collar and I really like it. So I thought a cream colored one would fit Masaki the best as well as that I could play around with the values and the hue a little bit on his sweater. So immediately when I was painting the clothes, I started to add a little bit of blues and some pale browns and kind of like a grayish tone to the both white and the cream color so that we could kind of mix up the hue to make the colors look a little bit more interesting and overall just like make it a little bit less flat when I add in the line work. Um, and then while I'm working, usually I will paint in the face um, and probably the eyes and then the hair. And Masaki, I treat very simple. So I kind of blocked in his hair very much just with a chestnut brown. I added some darker areas, added some highlights. And if I could, I kind of pulled in some blue color just to add a little bit of color variation to his hair so it doesn't look too, um, just like one toned, if that makes sense. I don't want it to look too monochromatic in his hair. I decided to add a little bit of sparkles into his hair just because I was gonna add like a different pattern for highlights but I thought it maybe clovers would be too much so I decided to like quickly change it last minute so I went with the sparkles with just a very pale kind of yellowy green and yeah so once I got the colors pretty much laid out I go right into line work and usually depending on my confidence with my painting skills I usually switch to a smaller brush but I think today was just a better day for painting so I just decided to use the I think this is a number six round I could be incorrect and it might be a number eight round brush but I decided to test my patience and kind of test my ability to get a good consistency for the line work so that is what i did and this one is actually one of my favorites i think the first two and the last painting are my favorite from the spread even though initially when i was drawing it i think the second doodle is actually my favorite but or not the second doodle actually it was the first one it's the second in if you're going left to right so it's the one with the kind of mustard hoodie and the like the dark green coat um, was my favorite when I was starting to sketch but I guess I kind of botched his face when I started to paint it which kind of upsets uh, me a little bit because that's like something I always try my best to avoid because I know I butcher a lot of um, drawings that I like due to painting and it's usually just because it's a skill thing I just need more practice and sometimes I think I need a little bit more patience as well so uh, for this one, I decided to add a lot more blush to his face, kind of keeping his face a little bit more rosier to add to the atmosphere of as if it is cold. Because like here, I think it's been getting... I think actually today might be the warmest day. Let me actually check. I know we've been like negative 26 with the wind chill every so often. And then I think today was about... According to my phone, it was zero today and the low of negative seven, which is the warmest it's been for the last few days. And then mm, Wednesday and Thursday are also going to be quite warm. I mean, quite warm, I mean the high of zero. And I'm talking in Celsius and not um, Fahrenheit, by the way. But yeah, for this outfit, I think I decided that I didn't want to give him the usual color for his scarf even though i did add a little bit more of like warmer tones i added more of a like a reddish pale gray for part of it as well as a little bit of that mustardy color into his scarf as well just to make it a little bit less like i said a little less boring in terms of the color choices because i don't really like painting gray all that much if i don't add like other color variation or just like anything that hints to the rest of the color palette so the pinkish area was pulled from his skin tone and kind of that yellowy mustardy color i think was mixed from his eye color potentially I do not remember but after that i decided to move on to his hair and just because like how it's cut off his hair actually looks quite flat um 
and I deliberately changed his eyebrow shape to be different. I changed it to be looking a little bit more either concerned or a little bit nervous instead of usual happy um, demeanor that Masaki usually has. Mm, I'm thinking like in the future, if I have a little bit more time, either digitally or traditionally like this, I don't want to like hold myself to this because I know sometimes I have some off painting days so I might scrap the footage, but if I can, I would like to pick some of my other OCs. So I only have like three other OCs that I could probably choose from besides like Hansuke because I probably won't give him an outfit. Um, so we have Koji, I have Sato, and I have Akimi for OCs that are like more humanoid characters obviously and I could probably do some winter outfits for each of them as well. But I'll have to think about it because gouache painting in general takes me quite a long time and the way how I approach these ones, like I said, I kind of treat them as like individual drawings on their own and then like as a whole I treat them more like as a like a whole sketch page because none of them are like completely finished um, and the way that they overlap sometimes I just let it to be like especially like the edges and stuff just to be raw and I don't really care whether or not like things get overlapped or things get covered up um, but we'll see because I think it would be fun to do um, the rest of them and it kind of seems like almost like a lookbook for their outfits if that makes sense also, we started with the third one for Maseki, so I kind of botched his face right away. I made his eyebrows a little bit too bushy, and in terms of trying to correct it, I made him look a little bit more concerned. Um, also, like the angle of his face is not usually an angle that I like to draw in. Um, usually I try my best to try to fix the angle a little bit, and I kind of made his cheek protrude a little bit more. So when I was placing the mouth, it was in a weird spot, therefore when I was painting it, I also like botched up his mouth which kind of contributed to his face looking a little bit off. And then I think in terms of his chin and jaw, it kind of got into a weird proportion so it still looks kind of off to me. So yeah, I kind of shifted gears and just focused mostly on the clothing. And I think in the back of my brain, I thought this one was going to be the one that I would enjoy painting the most, but you can see like in general when I was doing the face, I was brushing it. Um, and then the application for the hoodie looks a little bit different than how I did the like the scarf on the right side, which has a little bit more, I feel like deliberate strokes and placement of color, but usually when my gouache painting looks a little bit more rough and a little bit more almost like blended in a weird way like very rough looking in terms of like the texture and just a little bit more muted in terms of color variation i think it's because i work too quickly and working with the colors still very much not dry so a lot of the colors kind of like blend in with one another and i don't get those kind of crisp uh clean edges so to kind of combat that a little bit i like to add line art and at this point Usually I would add line work like at the very end, but because I was not liking it, I thought that I needed a little bit more definition. And then with this definition will help me place other shadows and potentially highlights as well. Because even though I don't like doing line work that much because it makes me feel like things are too much of a coloring book if I do line work before coloring, I kind of need it to help with like just the structural integrity of the whole thing as well as just like keeping my brain at a good place knowing which um, object is maybe in front, whether or not the object is like turning or like the thickness of an object, it kind of is told by the line work a little bit and if I don't like it, I could always just cover it up as well because I think some people approach like painting very much like shapes and very blocky without like an actual like line by line sketch. I'm very much a person who relies on lines even though usually I don't do like technically line work or like clean line work I guess. So you can see that after I added in majority of the lines I decided to paint in a little bit more with the hoodie and I got a color that I liked a little bit better because I needed that contrast. So with kind of that, it's not even a mustard color anymore. Um, I decided to add more of a bluish purple for kind of adding a bit of a hue shift as well as adding just like complementary colors look nice for shadows sometimes. So, mm. 
and then I added a little bit of green in there as well just to pull the green from the jacket and pretty much the rest of the jacket was done by adding more shadows and then a little bit of highlight after I put in the line work which I definitely needed and then the last one I spent very little time on his hair and the majority of the time on the hoodie jacket thing and the backpack so just because I didn't draw him in his usual outfit, I still like to associate that kind of turquoise um, kind of teal color with Maseki. So I usually throw it on to any of accessories if I can or any other kind of article of clothing. So I usually don't draw Maseki wearing like a backpack. I feel like he's the type that usually uses some kind of over the shoulder bag, kind of messenger bag type of bag because I don't think he's the type to carry too, too, like, too much stuff around and personally i don't know if it's because i usually make him wear an apron so he usually has two straps on his shoulder or like the little parts so the strap of the bag kind of acts like that as well because it's also like a brown bag but i thought that you know a brown bag for masaki might be too repetitive with his hair color so i thought maybe i'll just make the bag also the teal color if he's not wearing the teal sweater so yeah and I had a lot of fun doing the, the backpack very roughly with this color and then I used black to do the last part of the shadows for his jacket which I think I really needed to add to the depth of the backpack sitting on his back so yeah that is today's painting session using gouache um hopefully next week won't be another gouache video unless i'm going to continue with doing the rest of my ocs for the rest of the winter um but hopefully you guys enjoyed today's session of me painting um and i had a lot of fun doing this spread so yeah it's just Finally, I feel like I've done Masaki justice, at least with the, the two on the right and the one on the left, and not the one in the center because I kind of botched them again. But yeah, um, I'll talk to you guys next time on Wednesday, and yeah, I'll see you guys then. Bye!